determine how much uh, our enemies need to be chastened. The judgment or the declaration is a decree and the people of the kingdom should desire the king's decrees or his rulings more than fine gold. Why? Because his decrees or his spoken word will not change. They will not be put aside for any reason by anybody. They cannot be changed. God promised Jacob in a dream in Genesis 28, he says, I am with you and I will bring you back to this land. And God did. In Hebrews 13 and 5, we read, let your conduct be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. You know why? Because the king's going to provide for you. And if you're not happy with what he provides for you, he's not being a very good king because he's not providing your needs. In Hebrews 13, 5, we read, let your conduct be without covetousness. He goes on to say, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is a decree. That is a law. That is spoken word from our God. Know this for sure, that no matter what kind of trouble you get in, no matter what goes wrong in your life, the word has written document, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. If you're living, if you're living according to kingdom rules, there are stipulations. God will take care of us. Jesus is our returning king. He will take care of us if we live according to kingdom rules. Go to slide three, please. Privileges within the kingdom are the benefits the king lavishes upon his faithful citizens. Citizenship is desired by the people because once, listen, once you are in the kingdom, it is the king's personal responsibility to care for you, your family, and your needs. It is his personal responsibility once you are in the kingdom. All of your needs since the king owes, owns everything within the kingdom, he can give to his citizens anything, any part of his wealth that he desires. Think about it, people. He owns it all. He can give you a small portion of what he owns or he can give it all to you. His discretion. And I got news for you. You live according to the word, you're going to get it all. His word promises there's a code of ethics within the kingdom. It is the acceptable conduct of the citizens in the kingdom. It is the acceptable conduct of the citizens within the kingdom. If you're not acting right according to the word, you need to check yourself and you need to get it right. The code of, uh, includes moral standards, it includes social relationships, personal conduct, attitude. Sometimes I've got a sorry attitude. I'm going to be real truthful with you. I have got a stinking attitude sometimes. And I guarantee you, some of you do too. Amen, sister. I'm not in this boat by myself. Sometimes my attitude, I, I just think God maybe looks down and just does this. She's at it again. I'm going to have to talk to that heart. I'm going to have to break that heart just a little bit more. I'm going to have to tenderize that heart just a little bit more because she's acting up again. But the flesh is hard to control. The flesh is very hard to control. Every first of the year, I, I do a fast because I want my first of the year to be hot and heavy for God so it'll carry through to the end of the year. And I guarantee you, I have had more problems this week with food running under my nose, trying to get in my mouth. And I've had to say, God, I need your help. And you know what? The king helps. 
the king helps. It's his personal responsibility to take care of Audrey out of Atala, Alabama. Just a little old Yankee that came down here, still don't care too much about the South because you have to drive 20 miles for a gallon of milk. But I'm telling you what's the truth. It don't matter where I come from, where you come from, what color your hair is, how tall you are, how short you are, how big you are, how skinny you are, how dark you are, how light you are. It does not matter to God within the kingdom. We are the same. We are all equal thanks to Calvary. In Mark 8, 34, Jesus said, whoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself. One of the hardest things your flesh is going to have to do is to deny the flesh. And take up your cross and follow me. Once again, Paul summed it up when he said, follow me as I follow Christ. What if I told every one of you, y'all follow me because I'm following Jesus. Some of you would say, yes, yeah, sister, I'm, I'm headed right behind you. Some of you would say, no, it ain't going to happen. But Paul said, follow me. I'm doing the best I can to follow the Holy Spirit that leads, guides, and directs me because the kingdom is what I want to be fulfilled in. I want to live within this kingdom and let God, the King of glory, rule and reign in my life. It says, Paul sums it up when he says to follow me. Simply put, I'm going to put this in Audrey language. If Jesus did it, you can do it. If Jesus didn't do it, don't do it. Because it's probably sin. These are the code of ethics that we need to follow. Follow each other as we follow Christ. If our pastor is following Christ, then follow him. If he's not following Christ, either talk to him or get rid of him. Follow me as I follow Christ. If he's not showing us the way into heaven, if he's not showing us, us how to walk and talk and be Christ-like within the kingdom of God, we have no use for him. Kick him out. Absolutely. If, if your teachers within the classrooms are not following the word, if they're not following Christ, if they're teaching the children something on Sunday morning and, and staying out till 4 o'clock in the morning on Saturday night because they want to have a high whole time, you either set them down and talk to them or get rid of them. There is a code of ethics within the kingdom that we are to follow. There's also an army. There's an army within the kingdom. This is the kingdom's system of securing the territory and protecting its citizens. And I'd rather, I had never thought about this, and, but one of, one of the commentaries that I was reading made such good sense to me. And if y'all don't get this, and if it don't jolt you, you know, your wood's wet. I guess you say down here, your wood's wet. In a kingdom, citizens don't fight in the army. But they enjoy the protection of the army. God's kingdom has an army and it's called the heavenly host. We read all through the word of individual angels such as Michael and, uh, Michael and Gabriel. And in Luke 2.12 it states, This will be a sign unto you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, and suddenly... There was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and singing glory to the highest on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. The word host means army. You got a battle that you need fought? Audrey Vernacular, sick God on him. He's got an army that'll take care of him. When I get in my car, I ask God to allow his angels to encompass my car, not just around the sides, but go over the top and under the bottom. Angels, you protect me according to the word of God. We have a right to ask God to allow his army to protect us in the menial tasks that we do every day. In Psalms 103, 20 and 22, it says, Bless the Lord, you his angels, 
who excel in strength. If you think these are tiny little, little somethings that you can just pick up and, and move over, you are sadly mistaken. These are great beings created by God, full of strength. There is nothing that they cannot do at the command of our king. There is nothing that they will hesitate to do at the command of our king. There is no problem that you have that they will not conquer at the command of of our king. The angels who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word, bless the Lord, all you his hosts, his ministers or servants of his, who do his pleasures, bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his, of his dominion, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. His dominion is his territory, and we already have stated God owns it all. There is no place that we can go or be within God's kingdom that these angels will not go and, and help us out in a time of need. There is a commonwealth in the economic system. It is the economic system which guarantees each citizen equal access. To financial security. Now I don't think there's any of us in here that's rolling in money. But I got news for you. If you are a child of the most high God, you have a bank account that is unlimited that you have not even tapped into yet. In Romans 8, 14 through 17, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. If you have been born again, you have been led by the Spirit of God unto salvation. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, listen up, then heirs. Heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him together together we are joint heirs with christ we have been brought back into not only a re right relationship have you ever thought when adam and eve were created jesus or god would come down into the garden and they would walk and talk and fellowship and have have meaningful relationship together they communicated don't you think that, that God just poured his heart out to Adam and Eve? And because of sin, they blew it. But Jesus came to bring us back into that relationship where we can go to God and call Abba Father and say, Father God, I worship you. I adore you for what you have done. You are awesome. We are to praise and give him thanks and adoration for who he is. Remember what I told you? A king doesn't have to be exhorted by anybody. He's placed there and it's our job as citizens to just know that he is king. He is mighty. He is awesome. He is wonderful. He is our king. The kingdom's glory is the happiness and health of its citizens. When Jesus was on earth building his kingdom in everything he did, in every deed he performed, in every healing that took place, Jesus did one thing all the time. He gave God the glory for what was about to happen. How many of us do that? I fall very short. I'm learning not to, but I fall very short. God, I thank you that my son's going to be saved. God, I thank you that Dallas and I are going to be stronger as a married team for your kingdom. God, I thank you that this church is going to grow. I thank you, God, that you're going to send people here that maybe feel they don't deserve to be here. God, I thank you that you're going to fill our minds, our mouths with such wisdom that we can communicate with somebody off of the street to introduce them to Jesus. In everything that he did, he gave honor and glory to God. 
in our terminology or in Audrey's vernacular, Audrey's uh, terminology, Jesus made God look real good. He made him look fabulous. He made everybody around him. Jesus made everybody around him. He was the salt of the earth as he walked in this earth. And he made everybody that had anything to do with him in their heart. Now, I'm not talking to one, about the ones that, that belittled him. I'm talking about the ones that truly said, wow, he's different. There's something about him those priests over in Israel don't have. There's something about that high priest that this man doesn't have. There's something about mom and daddy, this guy's a little different than him. There's something about him that makes me desire him. Jesus allowed himself to be the salt, to wet the whistle, if you would, of the people that were around him so that they could say, I want some of that. Do we as Christians, do we stand before people that we work with or relatives and make them thirsty for what we have? Or does our family, friends, and work co-workers say, I, you know, I, I've got that good at home. I'm, I'm about the same. I don't need that. It ain't nothing special. But our kingdom is special. Our king is special. We should be the salt of this earth that makes others crave the king that we serve. In Luke 2 and 23, it says, he said to his disciples, therefore I say unto you, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. I'll handle it. I'll take care of it. Don't worry about tomorrow. The king's going to take care of it. In Luke, he's saying the kingdom's got you covered. Even if we don't think that we are even getting in touch with God, he's got it covered. I'm going to close with this. The last point that we're going to cover is social culture within the kingdom. It is the environment created by the manners of the king and his citizens. Our social, social color, culture within this kingdom should, should be that our manners should emulate Jesus Christ. Our conduct, our composure, everything about us should say we are Christ-like. We want our king to shine. We want our king to be the authority and ruler of our lives. In Matthew 20, 27 and 28, it says, Whoever desires to be first among you, let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. How does our king conduct himself? As a servant to all. How do we express the nature of our king? By being servants to all. Being born again is just the start of this journey. We talked about that this morning in our Sunday school class. Being saved is just the, the very, very beginning. After that, you need to get in the word. You need to grow. You need to, you need to let your faith grow and excel. How can you tell somebody about Jesus if you don't know anything about him? Let's all stand, Star, if you would come. I'm going to close with this scripture out of Isaiah 9 and 7. It says, of the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end. Upon the throne of David and over his kingdom, there was no end to David's throne. It was continued with Jesus. Think about that. David, David may not be king anymore, and Israel may say he was the best king we ever had, but his kingdom, his reign continued with Jesus. It did not end, it has not ended, and it will not end, because my Bible tells me that Jesus, the king of the Jews, the king of Israel, is coming back for his people. He has included the Gentiles in with the Jews, and we are one. We are the same. We are on even platform. We are the kingdom of God's children. Our king is alive and well and sits at the right hand of the Father. 
This is a decree within the word. It cannot be changed. Jesus is not going to get tired of being ruler and king and get all ticked off at his daddy and say, I've had it, I'm leaving. I read an, or saw an article the other day. Uh, it was about a king who fell in love with a married lady and she was divorced, but he could not marry her because he was king and she was a divorced woman. Therefore, he could not marry her. So he gave up his throne to marry this woman. I guarantee you, our king will not do that. Our king is sure. His feet are set in stone. He is the rock. He is our leader. He is our provider. He is everything that we are going to need no matter what the need is. If you have a need tonight, if there's anything that you need, it is not too small or too big for our king. It is our king's personal pleasure to provide for you within the kingdom. If you have a need, come forward. And all that is within me If you have a need, come on. The king can't meet your needs if he don't know what they are. He knows what they are, but he wants to hear you confess them. Bless the name of the Lord. Praise God. Kingdom living. That's rich. I know that you got something rich out of this message tonight. Thank you, Sister Audrey, for what God's given you to transmit it and transfer it to God's people. And I know everybody's been enriched and drawn closer to see more of God's kingdom work and to receive more kingdom living for God's glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. I want to just praise him and glorify him and live in the kingdom. Did you know the kingdom is bigger than the church? The church is just a little part of the kingdom, but the kingdom is so vast. And we're looking more forward to reaching souls for the kingdom of God and not just the church. It's important that we reach souls not just to bring in this church but to fill every church. I would that we could bless every church around here, win souls and fill every one of them. Hallelujah, that's wonderful. Used to do that. Back in the 70s, we sent people to most every denomination there was. When we won souls to God, whatever their religious preference was, that's where we sent them. Amen. 
because they needed Jesus and a Savior and they received him. And I praise God they came into the kingdom for his glory. Before we dismiss, is there anything else? God bless you all over this world, wherever you are. God bless you for being with us in the service. Is there anything else? Yes, Mary.